We are currently in Tulum, a small town on the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Me and Amy have spent the last two weeks here exploring Tulum and the surrounding area. So the first tank we've got here is the baby turtles and they are the cutest things I've ever seen. So in this video I wanted to share a few of the best things we got up to. To give you a bit of context, Tulum is pretty much divided into two sides, Tulum Town and Tulum Beach. The beach is a strip that runs along the coast where you'll find all of the luxury resorts, restaurants and hotels. There's yoga retreats, juice bars, and so many vintage clothing shops. It's already so different to the town. And the town is a more urban area, about three miles in from the beach, where most of the locals live. We started our trip in the town, which is a good base to explore many of the best sites in the Yucatan Peninsula, including the beaches, cenotes, and ruins. It's amazing to actually come here and see it for myself. There's great access to public transport, particularly the Colectivo, which is a really cheap local bus service that runs along the entire East Coast. On our first day, we took a Colectivo 30 minutes north to the beach town of Acamel, which is famous for its white sand beaches and marine wildlife. Today we've come to Acamel, which is one of the best places to see turtles in the Yucatan Peninsula. We've just got back from going snorkeling out in Turtle Bay behind me and we were really lucky because we managed to see three turtles and one of them was a huge female. Here in Acamel, turtles like this green come in close to the shore to feed on the seagrass. that it's a really good place to see turtles but you're never guaranteed of things like that especially because around here they don't feed the turtles to try and lure them in they're just observing them naturally so we were really lucky to see them so I did my research online before coming here and there's a lot of conflicting information about whether you have to pay whether you can come in for free and apparently now it's a hundred pesos to enter the beach and that doesn't include any snorkeling. So once you get here, you then have to pay a guide to take you snorkeling because you're not really allowed to go out without a guide here anymore. And that will cost you about 600 pesos and that includes your guide and all the equipment that you'll need as well. Back in Tulum, we stopped for lunch at a restaurant that we'd read great things about online. And we weren't disappointed. The vegan burrito was one of the best burritos I've ever had come down to Tulum Beach, which is easily one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen. Yes, it has got the famous red seaweed everywhere, but it doesn't really matter. It's incredibly calm and peaceful. The temperature is perfect and the sand is so soft. There also doesn't seem to be anyone else around. There's a few people up there and a few people behind us, but we pretty much have this beach to ourselves. So now we're going to go and head down along the beach to find somewhere to get a drink. There are two places in Tulum where most people stay. You either stay on the beach here in one of the hotels that look out onto the sea or you stay in the town which is what we've decided to do. Good morning. We're up early again today because we're off to do one of the most popular activities here in the Yucatan Peninsula. We're going to go snorkeling in cenotes.
Beneath the Yucatan Peninsula, there are thousands of miles of underground rivers. A cenote is formed when the ground collapses, creating an entrance to this subterranean world. We booked onto a guided tour that would take us to two of the best cenotes in the area. So we just arrived at our first cenote, which is Dos Ojos Cenote. I've seen some pictures of it and it looks amazing. We just jumped into this small cave to get used to the temperature and then we're going to start exploring the rest of the cenote. So we're just walking from the first cenote to the second and apparently the scuba divers that we saw swimming right under our feet now to get from one to the other underground. So we're just about to enter the next note, eh? And there are birds nesting in the walls. You can still hear them chirping. Oh, and there's bats as well. Oh look, you can see that nest up there. That's one that's chirping. Dos Ojos is one of the longest underwater cave systems in the world, but the loop we're doing here is only a few hundred meters long. As we went deeper into the cave system, the light disappeared and we found ourselves swimming in total darkness. After about 15 minutes, we reached our first stop, the Bat Cave. So, we're now going into the Bat Cave. <laughs> this hidden room is only accessible with a guide. But just as we arrived, we bumped into a couple who'd come into the caves completely unprepared. No wetsuits, no fins, no torches, and no guide. It was extremely dangerous, so our guide had to help them find their way out. We entered the bat cave and looked up. Above us there were hundreds of tiny bats nesting in the ceiling of the cave. Now it's on. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> this is around here. Check Raquel, this is in the hole, you stay in the, the babies. As we approached the exit, we saw this amazing shaft of light streaming through a hole in the cave ceiling into the water. So we're just leaving Dos Ojos and heading to our next cenote, 
which I can't remember the name of. <laughs> so apparently all these trees out here have fruit that the bats in the caves like to eat. So they come out through that little hole in the cave, collect the fruit from here, and then take it back into the cave. Really nice right now with tingly fingers. It's the cloth. So, uh -huh. so it's called Sonote Tuck Biha. Careful your heads. So this is Sonote Tuck Biha. And we've got it completely to ourselves. There's no one else here. <laughs> this is much colder than the other one. Tuck Biha is much smaller than Dos Ojos, but no less beautiful. It's only accessible with a guide, so it's far less crowded than other cenotes in the area. So this here is the trees. Roots. Let's come down from above. We did a short loop of the cave which ended with a tight squeeze for a hole on our hands and knees, and we were back in the main cavern. The next morning, we made our way to the ferry terminal in Cancun, where we'd be catching a boat to the island of Isla Mujeres. We are currently in Puerto Juarez in Cancun, and we're about to board a boat to Isla Mujeres. The tickets were 300 pesos each, and that includes a return journey whenever we want. We were heading to Isla Mujeres, a party island best known for its pristine beaches, luxury resorts and Carlos roads. But me and Amy were heading there for a different reason. Next time, we explore Isla Mujeres and visit the world famous turtle sanctuary. So the first tank we've got here is the baby turtles and they are the cutest things I've ever seen. Before returning to the mainland to continue our exploration of the Yucatan Peninsula. Back in Tulum, we swapped town life for beach life. This is by far the coolest accommodation we've ever stayed in. It really feels like you're in the middle of the rainforest. And head south to Siankan Biosphere Reserve. 